Welcome back everyone. This is Amy with Amy Astro. I'm so glad that you guys decided to join me again. This week's video is going to be a continuation on from last week's video where we discussed our, um, our autofocus issue. And if you haven't watched that video, please go back and watch it and you'll see what I was about to talk about. But Ron over at Moonlight Focuser, he gave me a solution on what would fix my autofocus issue and I gave it a try last night and he was 100% correct. That completely fixed my problem. I was able to run autofocus flawlessly all night, which is wonderful. But one of the comments that came out of that video was everyone was curious, how did I calculate my step size for my autofocuser? So stay tuned and I'm going to show you just how to come up with that calculation. guys so last week I showed you about my autofocus issue which turned out to be a mechanical issue and not a software issue but along the way I had to do some calculations on figuring out what my autofocus step size was supposed to be and make sure that I had that setting correct in sequence generator pro and a lot of folks were curious well how do you calculate what your step size should be well I can't tell you exactly what your step size is going to be, but I can show you how to accomplish the range. And within that range, you're just going to have to practice with your setup and see which one works best for you. But the first thing you want to do for your autofocuser, and I'm going to base all this off of the moonlight because that's what I own and that's what I know. You need to find out, let's see, if I open up my websites here for you. You need to find out what your step size is in your focuser itself. And typically you find that under the manufacturer's website. And for Moonlight, you go to their download tabs and you download this one file here for the mini version 2 quick guide. And you get this file right here from them. And you scroll down and you find the step size for your particular autofocuser. It's the size of each step that it takes. And you multiply that by how far the tube travels out and you find out how many steps total your focuser can make. But first, let's take note of this step size of 0 0.00016 of an inch. Now notice that it's inches. Now, everything we typically deal with is in microns, so we need to convert inches to microns. Now, I'm not going to teach you a formula for that. I'm going to cheat, and we're going to let Google handle that for us. And in my Google search, I typed out convert inch to micron. And I typed in the three zeros, one six, and hit enter. And it told me that that was 4064 microns okay so take note of that number for later all right all right so that is my interruption for the moment that is the cats jumping on a brown paper bag that came in one of our Amazon packages this week and it was all wadded up and now it's totally flat but they're enjoying the heck out of it jumping and uh, body sliding across the hardwood floors all right, so now that we know how many microns it is for one step on my autofocuser, there's a couple other things we need to know. We need to know what is our critical focus zone for our particular camera and telescope combo. And we're going to come over here to this website right here. It is called wimslowastro.com and when you get to their home tab it looks something like this you go to their software tab and you go to useful formula and like the best for everything they save the best for last you scroll all the way down to the bottom of your screen and you find the critical focus zone 
Now I'm going to base this on the color of blue, but you can base it on any color you like and just see what the variations in numbers are. But it tells me that my blue has a wavelength of 475. Okay, that's good. And the bonus of this, it's going to be an automatic calculator for me. I need to know my focal ratio of my telescope. Now you can get that from your telescope manufacturer's website over the specs. What I've done is I cut and paste all those specs over into OneNote so I don't have to look it up every single time. And my focal ratio for my telescope is 6.5. So I will type in right here 6.5. Alright, I need to know what my camera pixel size is for the camera that I'm using. Once again, I'll go over here to my OneNote and I cut and paste this from the ZWO website. I highlighted things that I'm constantly having to look up and my pixel size is 2.4 microns so let's come back here and type in 2.4 oops now typically I do my autofocus routine at a binning of 2 by 2 and then we will still calculate alright so my critical focus zone is 98 microns okay now we need to take that 98 microns and write that aside, you know, write it down as your critical focus zone. Okay? So now you've got a couple numbers here. We've got our, our step size, we know our step size converted to microns, and we know our critical focus zone. So now what we need to do is we're going to actually break out a calculator. Now, don't let me lose any of you guys. If you need to pause this at this moment and go get yourself a coffee or a, a five-hour uh, juice drink or something, please go do it because this is the next part that you're really going to want to know, okay? And what we need to do is take our critical focus zone, divide it by our focus or step size, and that will give us our step size. So my critical focus zone is 98. And we're going to divide that by our focus or step size, which we converted to microns, which was 4.064. And we're going to say equal. Alright, so our step size is going to be 24. We'll just round off to the nearest whole number, okay? So let's go to 24. Now they say that a good step size is between one and a half times and two times. So what we do is we just take this number and multiply it, let's say, with 2. Okay? So this says my basic step size on the high side should be 48. Now, if we took the 24 and multiplied it by 1 and a half times, we get 36. So my steps will be between 36 and 48 as a good starting point. Okay? And you take this information and you go over to Sequence Generator Pro and you set up your step size in the autofocus routine. Alright guys, so we're over here in Sequence Generator Pro and now that we've calculated our step size range, what we need to do is we come over here to Settings and right here where it says step size this is where we change it a step size of 49 is what actually worked out to be the best for me when I took it out for a trial run but you've got the whole range and you just play with those numbers until when you do an auto focus you end up with this beautiful curve alright so you adjust those step sizes and you run the routine several times and I took a screenshot of last night until you end up with this really nice curve and down at the bottom it tells you what your focus point would be which would be mine would be 8445 and that achieves me an HFR of about 2.5 and considering last night where the sky was extremely moist and half a moon and it just really wasn't that great I accepted this as a good focus for me. So that's all I had to do. So I changed this. I typically do seven data points uh, because I'm running the tri-band filter in the camera right now. I need about a 10 second exposure to accomplish 
my autofocus routine. So this does take a good bit of time at 10 seconds per image and then it calculates the HFR. And um, I have to do this times seven and sometimes it runs through twice. It could take me five or six minutes to do an autofocus, but you know, that's okay. The results are very good. Well, I hope that video on calculating your step size for autofocus was helpful to you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that alert bell so you know when I upload new astro-related material. Don't forget to hit like and share this video with all of your astro friends. I appreciate every one of you. I hope everyone is safe and doing well. And I will see you all in the next video. Until then, we all have some clear skies. Bye, y'all.